Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Tuesday, July 26, 2011, and I'm Darko. Uh, my website is www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Uh, you can check me out on YouTube, uh, ddarko2012, or on Facebook, Global Government News Group. Um, I did have a poll up here, but it's uh, it's no longer available because I don't really know why. Um, it's just not showing up anymore, so I guess this is uh, Google... Google's uh, way of, uh, you know, the Google genie or something, basically playing a disappearing act. Um, so, anyways, you can go down here all the way down to the bottom and uh, check me out there, network blogs. Otherwise, we're going to start with the economy. Uh, most, if not all, links will be posted unless I run out of room or I have uh, technical issues. Uh, and usually that will be in YouTube's, uh, on the YouTube page or YouTube uh, videos themselves in the description. So check those out, the headlines and links. A dollar stock slide on debt gridlock. The dollar fell broadly on Tuesday as lawmakers uh, remained deadlocked over raising the nation's debt ceiling to avoid a devastating default, while the U.S. and European shares also declined. So a lot of scaremongering that's going on right now, especially from the president. China's yuan hits record high of 6.44 against U.S. dollar on Tuesday. Then moving on to commodities here. Um, they're also going up. Uh, Brent was uh, basically up 22 cents at $118. Heating oil futures up about 50 cents. Uh, natural gas down a tad. Then moving down to agriculture, we have uh, basically everything was up. Um, you can go in there and check that out, but the big ones were cocoa, um, corn, wheat and soybeans also the precious metals copper was up seven dollars and fifteen cents at trading at four hundred and forty seven and it says here gold the gold was up almost five dollars one thousand six hundred nineteen dollars and thirty cents that's what gold is trading at and silver is uh, forty dollars and sixty nine cents up thirty three cents a gold high on u.s debt divide gold prices swell to a record on the deadlock over raising the U.S. debt limit as investors sought a refuge from the uncertainty surrounding the possible knockoff or knock-on effects in the financial markets from the drawn-out saga. And then we have recovery job growth concentrated in low-paying occupations. The Great Recession destroyed all kinds of jobs, it says here, but uh, the not-so-great recovery has so far replaced the lowest-paying jobs a much faster pace and higher paying ones according to a new analysis and you know the great takeover the great restructuring is what it should be called the great restructuring um, I've said this before we work harder and longer for less and that's why you have like uh, in Australia the uh, their little central bank uh, uh, the head of central bank telling their the Australians you need to be more productive in other words you need to be better slaves and, um, and that's what you need to get used to. So get used to low-paying uh, jobs. BlackBerry Maker Rim to cut 2,000 jobs and shake up. And then we have uh, European banks slash jobs to save on costs as weaker earnings and key business lines and coming regulations bite into their profits. Uh, post office may close offices to save money. And I talked about uh, the possible default or, uh, yeah, the default that the post office is going to go into. And, um basically uh, shut down completely and it's a good possibility here in October um, it says here so they're doing things like this the Postal Service is launching a study of thousands of local post offices for possible closures in an effort to save money and it says they lost eight billion dollars last year so that's uh, what happens when you don't have a free market a real competition home price uh, rise fails to lift housing gloom it says prices for new single family homes rose to a five month high in June even as sales slipped but recovery for broader housing market continues to be frustrated by an oversupply of properties so and uh, it says here declining US growth forecast means Fed may keep rates low and it says uh, that Goldman Sachs Group is among major banks cutting their forecast for third quarter US growth as business inventory swell and consumer confidence declines then we have UK growth it says industry struggles behind the figures manufacturing leisure and farming industries are all feeling the impact of government cuts and stall consumer spending it says UK uh, GDP figures show slower growth uh, basically 0.2 percent Americans taking shorter cheaper vacations recession scarred families are still not ready to go out and splurge on vacations in fact many are still cutting back on their big summer holidays. Check that out. Productivity critical now. The good old days are gone, says RBA. So the Reserve Bank Governor Glenn Stevens 
Uh, this is the individual I was talking about before. This is an earlier article that I was talking about, but this is a newer one. It has urged the federal government to confront the nation's dismal rate of productivity growth. It says that the mining boom has mass a dramatic downshift in consumer spending. And uh, moving on here, consumer hibernation will end, says the Reserve Bank of Australia. The current trend of household income to outpace consumer spending is no less sustainable than the opposite patterns says so spending rising faster than income uh, seen in the decade beginning in the mid-1990s. For retailers, that was one piece of good news from the Reserve Bank governor. He said he was speaking at an annual engagement at the Anika Foundation, which supports research into adolescent depression and suicide. What? It says consumer confidence in U.S. unexpectedly increased in July. It says uh, according to Bloomberg, uh, confidence among or this is carried by Bloomberg, sorry, confidence among U.S. consumers unexpectedly rose in July from an eighth-month low led by a rebound in the outlook for jobs over the next six months. Moving on here, I have plenty of news to get to. German consumer confidence slides amid debt crisis, so consumer confidence is down in Germany while it's supposedly up in the U.S. Says here, Mark McInnes, Chinese wage inflation will cost Aussies at checkout. And um, it says uh, now, uh, roaring China for years, the go-to economy for low-cost products is about to fuel a surge in prices at the Aussie checkout. So, and it goes on here, and our premier investments chief uh, warned a rampant wage inflation in China was among key pressures, squeezing Australian clothing retailers' uh, margins. I reported the Herald Sun. We have that's rich, the wealthy spend more on luxury. And it uh, goes down here and says China's wealthiest people have been under a bit of pressure from inflation with the cost of luxury products and services up 7.7% uh, year on year as of June. And it says the consumer price index release on Monday figure was 1.3 percentage points higher than the official consumer price index, which stood at 6.4% in June. Then 10 facts about the financial condition of America's families that will blow your mind. The first one is only 58% of Americans have a job right now. Only 56% of Americans are currently covered by employer-provided health insurance. The median yearly wage in the United States is $26,000. The average American household is carrying $75,000 in debt. Only the top 5% of U.S. households have earned enough additional income to match the rise in housing costs since 1975. And at this point, number six, American families are approximately $7.7 .7 trillion poorer than they were back in the early 2007. The number seven, the poorest 50% of all Americans now own just 2.5% of all the wealth in the U.S. And according to one study, approximately 21% of all children in the U.S. were living below the poverty line in 2010. Number nine, Today, there are more than 44 million Americans on food stamps, and nearly half of them are children. Number 10, the last one, according to Newsweek, close to 20% of all American men between the ages of 25 and 54 do not have a job at the moment. And um, you know, his job in the military, go and fight the war on terror, and, we, uh, you know, join uh, the big brother police state. That's where it is, where the eugenics care or health care says here nations uh, that benefit most from U.S. foreign aid often oppose U.S. positions at U.N. And it says here Republican amendment to appropriations legislation would bar funding for any government that opposes the U.S. position at the U United Nations more often than not. It says here, although unlikely to make it into law, the amendment draws fresh attention to the fact that the majority of countries, including most leading recipients of U.S. foreign aid, would fall into that category. And then we have uh, the Rothschild Bank and Goldman Sachs are both on the list of bondholders getting you taxpayer billions in Ireland. And we have this uh, geriatric deadbeats. Old folks may be less willing to repay sovereign debts. This is from the directly from the IMF. It says as the number of older voters relative to younger ones increase around the globe, the credit worthiness of borrowing countries could decline, resulting in less external lending and more sovereign debt default. Then the IMF is saying, sort out your debt crisis or the world will uh, basically suffer more threats, you know, just constant threats, financial threats, you know, like Obama last night. It wasn't uh, a speech, it was a threat. That's what he was doing. He was threatening people. U.S. needs to default on its debts. And it says here, Democratic and Republican congressman uh, have failed to reach consensus on the raising of the federal government's debt ceiling in order to avoid a default. And it goes on here. And uh, interview Tom Arm, CEO of Future Events News Services from London, to further talk about the issue. And he's uh, 
CBS shows Americans oppose debt ceiling hike 2 to 1, and this was on April 22nd. May 13th, Americans oppose raising debt ceiling 47% to 19%. Americans back mixed solution for debt crisis as Reuters poll. And this was the July 26th. Americans overwhelmingly are concerned about the U.S. debt crisis, and uh, majority backs the type of compromise pushed by uh, President Barrish Vittorio. Reuters poll found on Tuesday. And then we have previous debt ceiling hikes were of a shorter duration than the one Obama wants right now. The three previous debt ceiling increases signed by Barrish Vittorio have all been shorter duration than 18-month increase the administration is currently demanding, which is contrary to the president's argument that a long-term increase is necessary for economic stability. And um, Obama warns against debt limit stamps. And, uh, you know, you can check out on Facebook. I posted pictures of the skies, of the ripples, and the pulses of the ELFs with mixing with the chemicals. Um... But, uh, you know, they were doing a special pulsing last night. It was uh, a very short waves, bomp, 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 instead of the mmm, mmm type waves. And uh, my belief is that it was to create anxiety in people. And uh, it was going off. I noticed it. I looked outside and I came in and just happened to be his speech, which I wasn't even planning on listening to, happened to be on. It was on the radio, AM radio that was on. And uh, I was just listening to what he was saying. He was just like mixing in things, like saying, "Oh, and you're gonna, and, and you're gonna have, high, uh, if you don't do this, you know, Social Security, you're not gonna get your checks, and then, uh, and then interest rates are gonna go up, and then veterans benefits are, veterans are gonna get their benefits, and then uh, the banks are gonna be able to lend, and it's just like he was like mixing in all these threats with, you know, of people's uh, benefits, things that they have paid into, with things that are gonna." Um, uh, uh, basically help out the banks, the same people that got it, helped get us into this crisis. The other, the other thing too is, uh, it was a very, it was a very uh, glamorous speech. It was long-winded, and it was all over this thing. So, it's a big deal for them. And uh, the whole thing, uh, the whole scam and joke is that it's not really our debt. It's not your debt. You don't have any say in it. Just because you voted for some douchebag doesn't mean that you're being represented. You know what I mean? You get a few choices to pick between people, and they're all bought out by the banks, just like him representing Wall Street. And that's who he works for, and this is who it's for. So, you know, he's talking about kicking the can down the road. Oh, we don't want to kick the can down the road. Well, you, you've been doing that. You and Bush and all your other buddies have been doing this, kicking the can down the road, and you should have defaulted a long time ago. And um, they're going to blame deregulation and lack of government on it. So it's just a complete farce. And uh, people need to go to the root cause, which is government. It will inevitably um, uh, need uh, more and more money uh, as it gets siphoned off. And uh, wealth is redistributed and standard of living for most of the people, including the middle class especially, uh, gets lower. So this is war on you, and it's war on uh, poor, and mostly middle class people. But they use uh, poor people as uh, political leverage. So it's here and older people usually. Debt crisis created to keep Americans from real issues. And it says here, Chief Investment Strategist, the investment uh, basically believes the debt crisis in America is nothing more than a drama created uh, to keep people from real issues like health care and jobs. This is Mike Stathis told Press TV's U.S. Desk on Tuesday. He said that the parties were essentially the same, that the U.S. government is under control of corporate America and Wall Street. And he's right. That's what I was just saying. Bill Clinton, I would raise debt ceiling and force the courts to stop me. So there you go. And then look at this. Creates a super Congress. Maybe this is the whole point of the damn thing, right? Just like giving the Fed uh, dictatorial powers after the bailout and that. And stimulus super Congress debt ceiling negotiators aim to create a new legislative body. So more sweeping new powers. That's where everything's going. Debt ceiling negotiators think they've hit a solution to address the debt ceiling impasse as the public's unwillingness to let go of benefits such as Medicare and Social Security that have been uh, earned over a lifetime of work create a new Congress and composed of members of both chambers and parties isn't mentioned anywhere in the Constitution but would be granted extraordinary new powers under a plan put forth by uh, uh, the, uh, basically Mitch McConnell in, in Kentucky and his counterpart Harry Reid. And uh, talking about 12 member panels made up of 12 lawmakers. Then Moody's says likelihood of Greek default virtually 100%. Then Moody's, uh, five states that are going to basically uh, have their ra ratings lowered. Check that out. Alabama's Jefferson County hires bankruptcy lawyer. And then next up, FHA, Federal Housing Authority, may be next in line for a huge bailout. The Fed audit says $16 trillion in secret loans to bail out 
uh, uh, foreign and American banks. Sor Soros to end hedge fund career, then Lockheed Martin posts uh, profits, then Microsoft revenues hit record profits, Netflix tumbles, Facebook may bring credits to mobile browsers, and Boeing's Millennium Falcon floats using Nazi technology. And finishing up, Iran-China trade ties to top $40 billion. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.